All right, final segment tonight on Soccer Matters here, presented as always by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm. Uh, just a reminder here, Advantage BMW, seek performance, find luxury at Advantage BMW in Midtown. You're going to experience premier service tailored to you at Advantage BMW in Midtown. Uh, all you got to do uh, is discover something special, discover your hometown advantage. You go down to San Jacinto and Gray, Advantage BMW, Houston.com. They'll get you in whatever you want. Sedan X5 Service Center dedicated to putting your time first. And you can find the perfect new certified, pre-owned, or pre-owned vehicle. That's Advantage BMW in Midtown. And they help us bring on our next guest, uh, Houston Dynamo winger Tyler Pasher joins us. Tyler, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. No problem, Don. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so just heading into what is a big week already, the road game in D.C. It's four games in 12 days. Just how about, uh, you know, a little around the mood of the team right now? Uh, the, the team mood is in high spirits, man. You know, even though, you know, the, the run of form, it's it's not really bothered us because we know what our end goal is and, and, and end plan, right? And we're all just grinding down together and getting through it. As you know, it's MLS and, uh, you know, you can win back-to-back -back games and, you know, be at top of the table. It's just, it's just how it goes. So, you know, we're all uh, keeping a positive attitude. Take me into that. It's MLS because MLS does have a very unpredictable nature to it. Uh, you know, I know they want to build it up in Vegas, but I'm not sure it's the league you want to do a lot of betting on because anything can happen. So take us into that a little bit uh, with your experiences, the unpredictable nature of the league and the opposition. Yeah. You know, teams can go off, go start off in really bad uh, on a really bad foot and go on losing streaks. And then before you know it, they end up winning MLS cup. You know, it's just, it's a really back and forth league and anybody can win on any given day. And, you know, that's, it gives us a lot of, um, I would, I would, I would have to say positivity knowing that, you know, that this is just one of those spells that you go through in the league, you know, just getting your footing, finding your team, finding your teammates, you know, getting the chemistry going. And, uh, you know, it's, again, like I said, it's, it's MLS, the unpredictability of it. You just, you just don't know. So, you know, we have, we definitely have a lot of confidence going into these games coming up and into the future that, you know, we're going to make a really good run at it. Tyler Pasher joining us. Dynamo winger had that tying goal against Colorado. Conversely though, can you take your foot off the pedal? Because there's kind of that little gap of, you know, maybe there isn't as much consequence and it's all about timing it right and getting into the playoffs. No, definitely not. No, you definitely got to keep your foot on the pedal and going full throttle hundred percent every day. Cause you know, these, especially with the, the run of home games we're having, you know, it's, this is where you take advantage of those points. And that's when the points add up at the end of the season, when you really need them. And it's interesting because you look at the, the Western conference, you got teams like Seattle, Portland, uh, behind you sporting Kansas city. And you're thinking, okay, at some point, these guys are going to make a run because they're known for that. Uh, although, uh, Seattle has had a very bad injury to Joe Paulo, uh, their midfielder, but, um, it's kind of like a, a week to week, look at everything and focusing on your own business, right? Exactly. You know, and, and we want to be the team that people look at as, oh, they're a team that can go on a run. You know, that's the attitude. That's the attitude we have. You know, we have a winning group of guys that want to, you know, make a statement this year. Tyler Pasher, golden assist played for Canada in the gold cup. Inverted winger or getting the width, which do you prefer? Do you like getting out to the touchline or, or do you like picking up a ball and, and, and running inside? And I have a feeling I know what you might say, but I'm going to let you answer the question. Um, really, it, it, it really depends on uh, the kind of system I'm playing against and the opponent. Um, it just, yeah, it would have to depend on that, but either or I'm pretty comfortable on uh, either side. So the last game, for instance, against D.C., was that an attempt to get a little bit more width in the attack with Paulo Nagamura? Yeah, yeah, most definitely because of their three at the back, you know, getting the wingers and channels against center backs is your ideal situation, right? So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely the game plan. So the attack lately, it's, it's sputtering a little bit. It's staggering. You guys are trying to unleash it. Uh, you're trying to also get Sebas Ferreira involved a little bit more. How do you guys as wingers maybe support his game a little bit? You know, I just think it's more so building a relationship and understanding of uh, what each other likes, you know, does he like crosses in the air on the ground? Does he want the ball to feet? You know, it's still, uh, even though, you know, it's, it's been quite a few games in the season, it's still a chemistry that we're working on, uh, working on together and trying to figure out. Right. But um, yeah, as you stated, you know, it's, it's, it's been difficult for us, but it's just one of those where we have to grind through it and, you know, understand the system and the play that we're going to play and, you know, just, just keep working hard every day. 
Tyler, how much competition, you know, in training every day between you and Fafa Pico and Corey Baird? Competition every day, right? And it, it, that's what helps keep everybody sharp and on their toes. Um, let's take us uh, into a week here that starts with San Antonio FC. You're very familiar with the USL Championship. You were big goal scorer for Indy 11 before coming over to the Dynamo. Prior to that was Sporting Kansas City. But the motivation that these guys will bring on Tuesday night, I mean, on Wednesday night, uh, I, I don't think there's any question. You know, a lot of those guys are saying, and probably much like you, when you were at Indy 11, they're saying, hey, I'm good enough to be in MLS. I'm good enough to be on that team. I'm better than that guy. Uh, is that a lot of what goes on Wednesday night? Oh, 100%. They're going to come in with a do or die attitude. And it's going to be an intensity that we definitely have to match, if not, you know, be more than so it's it's one of those where it's a bunch of guys that this this will be the equivalent of playing in like a, a final in the usl right that you know you're going to leave everything out there and, and beat an mls team because everybody wants the position you're in so uh, how is it being positioned this week with the with the clarity of knowing that nashville's coming in this weekend it's a home game you guys want to get back on track um you know, is there any sense of looking a little bit ahead here? Is this positioned as, look, we want to win the USO. Uh, we want to win the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. How does it get positioned for you guys? I think we go into every game wanting to win, and we're going to put the best lineup out there on the field to win. And for sure, you know, why, why not go and win a cup? I mean, that's what we want to, That's what we're here to do at the end of the day. So it's definitely an opportunity for us to, you know, get through this game, win, and get on to the next round, and then, you know, figure out Saturday when it comes, right? And just worry about the game tomorrow first. So I was excited when you were playing with Canada in the Gold Cup and, and you know, uh, not selected as of late, but I would have to think that you're still pushing to try and make the Canadian national team and go to a World Cup. Do you have any conversations with John Herdman still? And, and where does a World Cup in Canada fit in the mind of Tyler Pasher? Well, it's definitely a childhood dream, right? And um, I think it's one of those where if I just continue to put my head down, keep working hard every day, that I, I give myself a good opportunity to be there. And, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not an easy group of guys. There's a, there's a lot of talent there and it's just amazing to see for, for Canada that we're doing so well. And, you know, we're definitely going to make a good run at the, at the world cup. So, you know, if I get my opportunity to go, I'm going to be grateful, but nonetheless, whatever happens, I'll be supporting the guys 100%. Tyler, have you had conversation with John Herdman? I mean, do, do you stay in touch with him? Does he stay in touch with you? How does that work? Yeah, every once in a while, every once in a while. Um, you know, it's, it's, mainly, it's mainly emails. He's a busy guy, right? So, you know, we just keep in touch with the medical staff and you know how it goes, just keeping the players up to date with the, the training team and everything like that. So John Herdman, you know, I mean, I did a World Cup where he was a coach of the Canadian women's national team when the, when the women in Canada hosted the FIFA Women's World Cup, the transition now to the men's side. What is it that makes him tick as the coach? Because, look, he's been a part of something historic, as have you and, have, and your Canadian teammates. You haven't been to a World Cup since 1986 in Mexico. Um, what is it about John Herdman that maybe has tied everything together here? Definitely the biggest thing I noticed was the, the brotherhood and the, the, the sense of unity that he's built within the, within the national team organization. You know, you got a, a group of guys that have each other's back through everything that are as close as brothers. And that's, that's the image that's portrayed when you get there. You know, nobody's bigger than anybody on that team. Everybody's equal. And we're here to all accomplish the same goal. And, you know, it's a really amazing culture and foundation that he's built. Tyler Pasher, Dynamo Winger, joining us. We appreciate his time. All right, but that's easier said than done. Every coach is going to say, hey, I'm good at bringing people together. My locker room's great, all that. What is it he specifically does, though, and, and, and makes him better than others in unifying a group? Honestly, I, I, I know how you said, you, you said that just there, but I have never seen a locker room like that, like the one I saw with the national team. Like, again, the way he's brought a group of guys together like that and has un unbelievable belief in everybody and each other, it's, it's incredible, man. It's, and it was an amazing experience to, to be a part of. And it definitely, it definitely makes you see what a, winning, what a winning environment and a winning organization and culture looks like. And it de definitely gives you a lot of good experience to take on, you know, even to your personal team. 
So when I interviewed him, when he was with the Canadian women's national team, he had kind of a guru, like a, a little bit of a guru, like quality around him, right? Like kind of, you know, a, a motivator, a self-help kind mm -hmm. of feel to him. Is that fair to say? hundred percent. Definitely, yeah. definitely helps to get the best out of every player. Like, does he, is personal conversations with you? I mean, are they things that you walk away as a player? Hey, I'm supremely motivated here after talking to my manager. For sure. You know, like I remember the, when I was going into gold cup, we had a chat on the phone for about an hour and a half, just talking about he's from Newcastle and I played in Newcastle. And then that was just like a, a conversation we had. And, you know, I just kind of felt like talking to a, a friend, not more so your, your boss. Right. So you were up there in the North Sea. I've been to Geordie Land uh, one summer for six weeks. Now, that was a really interesting part of your career because that came through friends, right? And then That's you used right, to yeah. go over to Newcastle pretty consistently. Correct, yeah. Yeah, can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, it was just um, through a connection of mine back home in Canada. He is, his son was actually currently playing and signed there with the first team. And, you know, he uh, had an opportunity to bring me over there and just say, hey, can I, could he try and train with the team? Because I'd playing with like the ODP kind of style in Canada, sorry, um, organization in Canada. And, you know, I ended up doing pretty well in training. They said, hey, you're welcome to come back anytime. And then, you know, I started going back for longer periods and longer periods. And then it looked like something that potentially I was going to stay and be there full time. And it just didn't, it didn't end up working out that way, unfortunately. But it definitely taught me everything I know about the game today. That's for sure. The passion in Newcastle and Northern England is, is off the charts. Can you express that to my listeners uh, just from what you experienced being over there training with them? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a religion, no doubt. It's a way of life. And, you know, even, even when I was nine years old playing with these kids, these kids acted like they were 25 year old men playing for a paycheck like they made sure that they were doing everything they could to play over you you know it was a dog eat dog world and that there right off the hop just sh showed me the difference and you know how passionate everybody is about the game over there and it was again where I learned uh, learned how to play and learn to develop that passion myself Tyler Pasher joining us, uh, a lot of experience, Canadian national team member, Gold Cup uh, with Canada, played against the U.S., if you remember, and uh, also had that tying goal against Colorado. All right, the attack right now. What do you think the, the attack is lacking right now for the Dynamo? Um, I would just probably say, you know, chemistry, you know, just being on the same page with each other. As I kind of stated before when you were speaking about Sebas, it's just, you know, what what is each other like like how can we help each other get into better spots get on the ball and you know help each other in those moments and i think that's something that we're working on every day and, and at some point it's going to form and it's going to come together you know and it's just something we need to keep our heads down at and keep working at tyler did you feel like you had good moments in transition against dc where it seemed like you were breaking out and then maybe a ball would be played behind somebody or maybe the execution off or an unforced error. Cause I, I thought there were a few moments in the game looked like you guys are going to be able to break well. And then maybe one passes slightly off or, or something derails the attack. Yeah. You know, that, that happens, man. You know, we're all going to have off technical days. It's just, it's just part of the game. Right. And, you know, coming, coming from Houston, we weren't, we weren't really prepared for a cold, wet kind of day like that. So, you know, it was, it was difficult to adapt to, but it just was, it just was one of those days for us, you know? How about the new uh, setup under Paulo Nagamura and, and, and some of the things that have changed here uh, in his first year as a head coach, maybe take some of our listeners into that. Yeah. You know, it's, we're, we're a team that definitely wants to play. We're a team that wants to be hardworking defensively and um, be good on the ball and good off the ball. And, you know, it's it's a sacrifice for the team environment. You know, nobody, again, is bigger than anybody on the on the team. So it's 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 a system that we're all still working on adapting to figure out what he wants us to do in certain situations and, you know, and get a better understanding and grasping of um, of all the fine intricacies involved. But again, it's it's like I said, it's just a process that we're all working towards. So branding teams is a dangerous game because teams morph into th different things throughout the course of 90 minutes. I mean, you know this better than anyone, but what would you call a dynamo? Would you call a dynamo a pressing team? Would you, you know, how, how would you kind of 
label the purpose of play for the fan base? The purpose of play would be to wear teams down with the ball. That's our ideal image. And again, it might not have looked like that recently, but that is our ideal picture of how we want to play. And again, you know, it's, it's just working through those fine details of getting ourselves into those situations, into those moments to be a possession oriented, dominating team. Tyler, before I let you go, is there anything better than being a professional soccer player? I mean, life is pretty good being a pro, isn't it? Definitely can't complain. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it very much. Best of luck against San Antonio and then flipping it around against Nashville uh, on the weekend. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I appreciate it.